For a start, um, I'd just like to ask, are there any professional wrestling fans in the room? Yeah, no? All right. Okay, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Bye. <laughs> Cheers. No, um, professional wrestling is an absolutely amazing entertainment sport. Like, it's a complete sort of violent pantomime. And I'm here to talk about sort of the weird and wonderful world that is wrestling and how it's helped me in kind of like a one-sided narcissistic therapy session. So, <laughs> cheers for that. I wrestle under the name Scotty Rourke. That's me. Hi. Yeah, I didn't bring my spandex. I thought I'd at least uh, supply a picture. I've been wrestling since I was 17, and I'm now wrestling for promotions across the UK. Uh, I'm primarily a cruiserweight and high-flying wrestler, and I've been described as erratic and irresponsible. And uh, watching me wrestle is like watching a kid on Skittles. So take from that what you will. But underneath, uh, I, I suffer with mental health issues. Uh, depression is a very, very common mental health issue. And it affects one in five people in the UK alone. That's almost 20%. Uh, and that's a, an astounding number. And um, it often results in suicide. There's no sugarcoat in that. Um, suicide is a, is a rising cause of death amongst young people, and that's fact. As well as depression, anxiety. Uh, anxiety is a feeling of unease, such as worry or fear, and everyone will feel anxiety at some point in their life, whether it's a job interview, exams, any kind of stress, public speaking. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people... Um, feel anxious constantly and it's uh, to the point where they can't control how much they worry um, has physical effects often known as like resulting in things known as panic attacks coping mechanisms like people will you if you google coping mechanisms you'll find step-by-step -step guides and that's great if that sort of stuff works for you but often people's coping mechanisms are completely subjective so what works for one won't work for another um, I found professional wrestling. When I was 17, I started college and I started professional wrestling and that monstrosity on the left was me. <laughs> what a horrendous creature. <laughs> uh, college was a real struggle for me and uh, that's sort of where I, I started suffering quite badly with mental health issues. I went through a really rough patch, some, some really personal stuff happened and... I went from 14 stone 5 to 12 stone 7 in just under a month because I wasn't eating and I was being sick every day before college and that sort of became a morning routine for me. Professional wrestling became a massive part of my life and not just the sport, like the community as well. It provided me with a form of escapism that I hadn't felt before. A lot of people will talk about how People wear masks as a form of coping with things. For me, it's almost like an alter ego. Like, Scotty Rourke doesn't have any of the same troubles that I do. Like, he'd have no problem coming up and presenting this if I was all in my spandex. <laughs> From the minute you step out the curtain, it's almost a different mindset. You go into a different headspace, and a friend of mine said to me, it's nice to see you smile like that. It's like I could literally see a weight being lifted from you. And I've never been able to sum it up quite as much as that before. I fell out of love of wrestling when the promotion that I started with back home in Grimsby sort of collapsed. And it was a similar time that I moved to university. So on top of already established mental health issues, I had the upheaval of moving to the other side of the country from Grimsby to Liverpool. So literally like east coast to west coast. That's not a good rap song. <laughs> And I quickly began to feel isolated because I didn't have many friends out there. I was the only one from Grimsby that went to Liverpool and turned to sort of drinking with my uni friends. And that was fine for a little while. And obviously I didn't have the, the release or escapism that I had with professional wrestling because it had almost deceased when I was back home. My drinking started off as social, as I said, with the, sort of the lifestyle of freshers, but it got out of hand. From September to December, I lost even more weight, going from 11.6 to 10.4. I remember getting home for the Christmas period, and my mum gave me a big hug, and she turned to me and she was like, you've lost a stone. <laughs> and I went upstairs and I checked, and, and I'd lost a stone. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I wouldn't tell my friends sort of how excessively 
I was drinking, I simply said that I wasn't eating very well because that's, you know, you're poor at uni. But it had become apparent that I, I was drinking to the point where I gave myself a stomach ulcer. Um, and I sank further into a depressive state and began having intrusive thoughts of suicide. I was contemplating it daily and that was a really sort of dark period of my life. It, yeah, it, it, it was difficult, like there's no way around that at all. British Wrestling Revolution was initially founded by the leftover remnants of what was the Grimsby wrestling scene back home. And a close friend of mine said to me in a more expli uh, explicit way that if I wanted to be a part of BWR, then I needed to sort myself out. <laughs> I needed to have the right headspace and I couldn't be sort of abusing my body in the way that I was abusing it. This is when wrestling kind of took over again and became a huge part of my life. And I've been very hands-on with the company. Like I've helped my friends build the company up from scratch, whether it's we've, we've renovated a new venue that's like capacity is about 600 people. Because like it's mad to think the Grimsby wrestling scene is booming because nothing else in Grimsby is. <laughs> The wrestling community is so unique in so many ways. Like, as I said, where else do you get to beat up your best mate and not get told off for it? There are people in my life that have supported me through such dark times and I'm so grateful for that. Some of them are set up there. <laughs> my tag team partner, Cole, Jenny and Adam, who was the one that had a word with me before. And like, if it wasn't for them being here, I don't think I'd be able to do this today either. Um, they're always by my side. We're almost inseparable. Some would say too close. <laughs> Professional wrestling is, I would say, one of the only true team sports because the things that we do in the ring and the stunts that we perform, you've got to trust who you're on with. You've got to trust who you're in the ring with 100%. I'm not going to let any Joe just smack me in the face. So trust is a massive thing. If someone's got you over their head and they're about to drop you, you're going to trust that person not to hurt you. <laughs> but without some of the friends, as I say, I've made through wrestling, I don't think I'd be here. Uh, the pictures up there are uh, a few of the friends that have been by my side the entire time. They're at uh, WrestleMania parties where we've got to dress up at the pub that I work in. Um, and they're really fun. <laughs> Wrestling's really fun. <laughs> Not only has professional wrestling provided me with a safe and healthy outlet, constant emotional support, both emotionally and mentally, from my closest friends and family. It's also pushed me physically, like, you know, healthy body, healthy mind and all that jazz. It sounds really cliche, but it was said earlier about working out, sort of clearing your head and, and, and building the mind. So to be on top physical form is, is a big part of it. Like I need to be sort of the best I can be and it's constantly pushing my limits. Like if it wasn't for wrestling, I wouldn't be delivering this talk today. Um, I was found on Twitter by someone that worked for joe.co.uk and I, I uh, was interviewed over DM because um, he was doing a segment called How Wrestling Saved My Life. Um, and I thought that was really interesting and I really needed to get behind it. and. I didn't expect it to go any further. Like it was a case of, I thought it may be someone's like school project or like college, you know, college thing, but it got three million views. <laughs> and that and that was like in the new year. So this is all very new to me. You'll have to bear with. <laughs> but from that, like from stem, just from that alone, I'm I'm here today. I'm I'm delivering my first TED talk, and I think that's massive. I'm working with BBC Radio 1 and they're putting together a three-part documentary podcast about myself, professional wrestling and mental health because it's such a massive forefront at the minute. I still think it's a little bit taboo to talk about it, so it's, it's all about breaking those boundaries and being honest and I couldn't wear my heart on my sleeve any more than I do. The signs of depression, they're very noticeable. Some of them are more noticeable than others. I've already touched on uh, the rapid weight fluctuation, but you know we'll leave Fat Connor in the past. But what I'm trying to say more than anything is it's okay to not be okay. Like, I'm not okay, and that's okay. Have I said okay enough? <laughs> it's really important to own your own okayness, whether it's good or bad, because at the end of the day, you've only got yourself and you've only got the people that you surround yourself with. If you're passionate about something, 
there will be others out there that, shame, uh, that share that same passion with you. And it's all about grabbing those people and clinging onto them for dear life, even when they want to get shut of you. <laughs> Check on your friends. You never, ever know what's going through someone else's head. And to be quite frank, you never know when the last conversation you're going to have with some of your friends are going to be. If anything I've said during my time up on this stage has resonated with anyone or anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at all. A problem shared is a, bod a problem halved. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you.